your time. To Studio B, Jerem Jordan, Dave McCann with you on BYU Sports Nation, your Cougar Sports day-to-day play-by-play. Saturday after practice, I spoke with offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick about how it went and what the portal needs are and the quarterback situations, running backs, all the line, wide receivers, how to, all of it. Here it is. All right, Aaron, uh, spring ball's over. How'd it go for you? It was good. I um, thought we made a lot of progress this spring. Uh, you know, a lot of things to work on. We've still got a long way to go, but we definitely got better. How would you quantify that uh, improvement? Well, just the physicality I thought was good. You know, we, we saw some real development in some of our young offensive linemen, tight ends, uh, young running backs. Just you can see a daily improvement in those guys. And uh, it was a pretty physical spring, but it was necessary. You've been doing this a long time. Now that you had one year in the Big 12, how did the approach maybe adjust if uh, it did at all going into year two now? The approach doesn't change that much. You know, I, we, I, I experienced this with Kalani and Jay and, and uh, at Utah when we went from Mountain West to the Pac-12. Um, there's a learning curve there for sure, you know, and I think, um, you know, you just have to take the lessons you learn in those tough losses and those tough games. And then this year, you know, uh, those things are going to carry over. I think they're going to do us some good. And, you know, you have to learn to put the, the game that you played on Saturday behind you, win or lose, and be ready for the next one because uh, it's going to be a tough battle every week. How did last year affect your preparation for this spring ball, given struggles in the run game yet, effectiveness in certain areas? Yeah, it, it definitely, you know, the struggles we had in the run game last year, that was number one priority of this spring was get back to running the football the way we have in the past. And we were a very good running team, you know, three, four years in a row. Last year we took a step backwards. And so the number one priority this spring was to be able to get our run game going because play action pass is where our big plays come from. And so uh, that's what we've been working on all spring. You kept the continuity of the returning group, didn't really add to it. What do you love about that group to the point where, hey, we feel like we've got the guys here already? Well, I think continuity is huge, and, and uh, you know, and you look at we won 29 games in three years with basically the same group of guys. We had a little bit of turnover each year, but very little, you know. And it was we had Jaron and Zach who had been in the offense for years. We had offensive linemen that had been in the offense for years. We had a group of receivers that had been around a long time, and I think that's an advantage we have this year is everybody's back pretty much, you know. And and so they've all played. They all know what we're doing. And that chemistry that develops in time playing together is huge. And I, I think our basketball team had that this year. You know, it was basically the same group of guys, for the most part, that, that struggled a little bit a year ago. And then this year they had a great year. And I think just you, there's no substitute for playing together. And that doesn't automatically equate to success per se. But what are you seeing from the guys that makes you encourage that, like basketball, you could have a leap forward? Well, you just see it, it, it happens in little ways, little things, you know, just uh, might be a route we're running and where the quarterback and the receiver are on the on the same page and the ball's out before he breaks and it hits him right in stride where maybe in a game last year we were just a, six inches off, you know, uh, and, you know, now a few months later you've got more reps under your belt at that play and then you see it work in practice and you, you just have more confidence. Okay, that particular thing is going to work in a real game next year. And there's dozens of examples of little things like that that happen every day that uh, only happen by just playing together, just repetition. At running back specifically, is there a specific pecking order at this point? Like is LJ RB1 and then is there an RB2? Uh, Falau's had a really good spring. Hinkley, Rapati, um, and uh, Miles has had a good spring. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know if we, I wouldn't really call it a pecking order, but they're all gonna play. And they're all going to be part of what we do. And we love, we like all those guys, and you're going to see a lot of them. Any separation among the two uh, competing starting quarterbacks? Um, I thought that it was a good battle, um, it's, and it's going to keep going. Um, and they both did a lot of good things. You know, in Gary's case, he's a very experienced player, really smart guy. Um, he's still learning the offense. I mean, he knows it, but doesn't have it completely sunk in yet like a guy who like you know jake's been here over a year 
So Jake has a little less experience, but he knows our offense a little better. And uh, that's really the main difference between the two guys right now. Um, skill set wise, they're pretty similar. You know, they're both really good athletes, good throwers, smart guys, good leaders, and uh, good chance we're going to need both of them. That's how college football is nowadays, and that's how it goes. Any differentiation in terms of what you'll look at exactly in fall camp as to who's going to get at least the initial start? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's just whoever takes care of the football and moves the team the best. You know, um, you can play very conservatively and take care of the ball, but not really go anywhere with it. Um, or, you know, we also don't want to be just so aggressive that we're putting the ball on the ground or throwing it to the other team. So we got to, whichever guy can find that best balance of taking care of the football but still moving the team and scoring points, that's, that's what we're looking for. Whoever does that the best will be our starter. Did one of the two do that better in spring in your mind? Uh, well, it's not enough. I don't think it's a big enough body of work to um, make that determination yet. But I will say, Jake, first time in my career I've seen a quarterback go 15 practices of spring ball without an interception. Mm. And that was the number one goal for him in spring was to take care of the ball. You know, he had he did some really good things last year, and uh, you know it's been talked about. He had some critical turnovers that that were costly. And so we challenged him this spring to take care of the ball and, and uh, zero picks in 15 practices is really good. And he was aggressive enough down the field? Yeah, no, we're still running our offense. In fact, if, if anything, you're more aggressive in practice than you are in a game because you can try things. You, you know, you can, there's no, there's no consequences if you make a mistake or if something doesn't work. You, know, you, you wouldn't can, bring up the stat though. That, that'd be the consequence, right? Yeah, yeah, but he, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just one part of the equation, but uh, but I was, I was proud of him for that just because that was something he needed to practice, to work on. O-line, uh, obviously a group that you want to see take a step forward. How has TJ Woods and that group uh, shown you something this spring? TJ's an excellent coach. Uh, I'm really glad to have him here. Saw some really good development in that group. Um, and again, we have some returning players there that are going to be critical to our success next year. Um, Braden Kime, you know, we're getting him back. Connor Pay, uh, Waylon, uh, Caleb at the end made a huge improvement this spring. I'm really, really happy with the direction he's going. So uh, just got to keep going, though. You know, I think all of us got a little bit humbled last year. You know, we'd had a lot of success running the ball for a few years, and then last year it was a struggle. And so I think the key is just keeping our edge, you know, and uh, our determination to get back to what we used to be there. Kingsley's going to be drafted. That'll be three straight left tackles from BYU. That's a big deal. The only other position I would argue is more impressive it would be quarterback, which you put two in the league, and hopefully Keaton gets a good chance here. What, what does that say about the program, having three left tackle starters in a row get drafted? It says that this is a good place to play left tackle. You know, I mean, I think, and I, I think uh, for us that's huge in recruiting to be able to tell our guys, you know, tell our recruits that our offensive linemen get drafted. And we'll have more. There's there's more guys on our team right now that I believe will be drafted in the next couple of years. Keanu Hill at tight end. How that how's that been uh, showing so far? It's going well. He's a tight end. He's he he fits. You know he doesn't have to battle his weight anymore. He's been three four years now just battling to stay, you know, stay below 230. You know, and now we just he doesn't have to fight it. He's 240 245 and looks really good. He's running as well as ever. Um, He's a difficult matchup as a receiver at tight end, and he's a good blocker. He's, he's done a nice job. Um, I would say he blocks as well as any tight end we have. So you can keep him in line at times and disguise him? Yeah, he'll, he'll be all over the field. He'll be hand on the ground on the end of the line of scrimmage. He'll be in a wing. He'll be split out. He's, he's going to be all over the field. Sometimes, especially in spring for early enrollees, coaches don't want to talk about freshmen, but you guys have been outspoken about Reiner Swanson. Is he going to get a lot of playing time this fall? I expect him to play. I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to try to speculate how much, but I think he'll play for us this fall. Yes. How are the wide receivers looking? Good. Um, that group, that, you know, that's another one where those guys have really had their moments last year, and then there were some moments of youth, just uh, you know, first-time experiences um, in in a tough conference against really good defenses, and all of those guys I think are going to take a huge leap forward this year. Um, just reminds me of uh, that group we had back that played with Zach and Jaron. Basically, you know, it felt like the same group of guys for like three years. But um, I'll forget somebody if I start naming them. But the way those guys all got better each year, and then the way we were operating at a really high level, you know, Zach's last year and Jaron's two years, um, 
I feel like we're heading in that direction with that group. You know, that this year they're going to be able to do line up in any position we need them to, to know the whole offense, to execute at a high level, uh, to not be phased by what defenses we're playing against. I think those things are, I think that's the direction we're heading. Do you mix and match those guys among X, Y, Z? Yeah, and that's what's been that's what's been one of our keys to our offense in the past is that those guys can move around, play different positions, line up all over the field, um, and basically do everything. And so we don't really have true slot receivers, true outside guys. They play all over the place, and um, I think we'll be more able to be multiple with those guys this year. Do you want to add any uh, specific positions out of the portal? Have you targeted that? We're a little bit low at offensive line right now. I mean, we like the guys we have a lot. We're just um, we're a couple, you know, two or three guys less than we usually carry at that group. So, you know, we're not desperate, but if we find an offensive lineman or two, we'll consider it. Aaron, thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Great to talk to you.